between the cells and the healer turns out to be unimportant. The cells were set up in a certain way in the laboratory. They were always set up that way. The, the healers were able to visualize how those cells were set up. They initially worked on the cells in culture in our lab via the telephone. We had healers that worked on the cells in culture from a distance of some 6,000 miles. Same result as if the healer were in the lab. We shielded, in a set of about 100 experiments, we shielded the, the cells in the lab from ENF, EMF, and gamma radiation. Uh, a lead wall room, Faraday cages. The healer was 6,000 miles away, similarly shielded. At prescribed times, the healer worked on cells in culture. Same results as if the healer were in the laboratory. So whatever this healing process involves, it involves some form of energy, i.e. subtle energy, that is something we certainly do not understand and is different from any kind of energy form that we know about. The experience of the healers were slightly important, even, but even a beginning student could actually uh, produce a result. Uh, the effects were actually enhanced by group healing. Uh, group healers actually uh, uh, treating cells both before and after uh, radiation, so survival rates actually went up to something like 98%. Healers, however, failed to produce a result in about 12% of the experiments. Even in this very clean lab, 12% of the experiments failed. Um, these findings, I think, are very difficult to explain in terms of the standard scientific paradigm. It's, it's curious, my physics friends really don't have too many problems with this. My colleagues in medicine and biology go berserk when they see these uh, results. <laughs> Um, let's look at the importance of conditional workspace. These 854 experiments uh, done in the conditioned space fail 12% of the time, or 102 out of 854 failed. In a non-conditioned lab, that is a lab that was uh, treated, that was not treated by pranic healers, no effect in 90% of the experiments, very dirty lab, 100% failure. Uh, moving right along, let me quickly look at the investigation of this 12% failure rate. In the previous experiment, we actually had a healer plus a cell manager. Uh, in a new set of experiments, 100 that we did, we not only had a healer but a cell manager as well as someone that observed this. And what this observer did was the following. As the experiment was going on, they picked up their cell phone and called their favorite charity and made a donation to that charity and willed any good karma that came from that gift of money to the charity to go to these cells and the change in survival rate. Uh, kind of a strange experiment. <laughs> uh, but here are the results. There, were, there was no improvement in the cell survival rates, but the failure rate dropped from 12% to 4%. No correlations between success rate and amount donated or charity used. And I'd suggest that this represents the first experimental observation and measurement of karmic intervention. <laughs> uh, summary. Planet healing can reverse the effects of radiation on cells and culture. Results are independent of shielding and of distance between the healer and the subject. Results are dependent on condition of lab space, however, and perhaps the results are improved by karmic intervention. The results are inconsistent with the Newtonian physics worldview, and I should note that Newtonian physics is the basis for contemporary biology and Western medicine, um, and that these results are probably consistent with a more quantum mechanical worldview. Uh, I'd like to just take one minute to uh, provide a, uh, a, a couple of comments. Some of you have heard these comments before, which I apologize, but uh, let me, let me go on anyway with some final remarks. In our culture today, space travel is sometimes described as a final frontier. Let me suggest to you that the data presented here clearly shows that there is yet another frontier, a frontier beyond our common notions of space and time that involves the power of the mind, of the mind through focus intentionality, to intervene in and to change the physical world. To approach this new frontier will require a new worldview and a new paradigm for science.
perhaps even a formalism in which science and spirituality are finally united. This coming paradigm shift may well be important as those that occurred with Galileo or with Darwin. It will change forever the way in which we heal one another and the way in which we view ourselves in the universe, opening infinite possibilities for those of us that dare to dream. Thanks. Thank you, Joey. Very, very exciting um, work. I see some hands in the back. You define success as the uh, difference in survival rate between experimental and control groups. Uh, do you have any sense about whether the control groups in the clean lab had a different survival rate than the control groups in the dirty lab? Um, no. No, they did not. Okay. What criteria did you use to choose the healers? Um, the criteria for choosing the healers were, were people that were, um, well, basically, people that, uh, uh, that felt they could, uh, could make uh, changes in the cells and culture and were willing to do the experiments, basically. There were a number of healers that, when, uh, that eagerly volunteered for these, uh, for these studies, but then when the studies were explained to them, backed off. Uh, because I think they felt they were going to get tested. And uh, uh, so it was, it was virtually, I mean, we were open to basically, basically, basically anyone that felt that they could make changes in the cells. Um, and, uh, I'd like to mention it would be helpful if you could give your name and your extra question. Uh, my name is Robin Clare, and I would like to ask you if any of the healers made a distinction between not even recognizing the difference between the energy in the lab and the energy in the cell, <clears throat> perhaps focusing on the fact that energy is energy and they could just go in and as they cleaned the lab, they could, so to speak, clean the cells at the same time. Well, uh, there were certainly some healers that were less sensitive to the laboratory environment, but were still equally successful at treating the cells in culture it seemed that several of the healers were particularly sensitive to the environment they were working in. And uh, that, in fact, is what led us to do the cleaning of the lab. Bill Beatty, um, what was the source of ionizing radiation? Uh, it's a gamma, ray, gamma source. Yeah, I mean, um, if what, someone wanted to replicate it, what would they um, have to find for equipment? Well, actually, it's a, it's a fixed gamma ray source, and. Um, uh, we used several different ones during the course of the study, and I can, I can give you some further details later. But it's a fairly, it's a standard uh, gamma ray source, but, uh, several different ones. Uh, I'm Garrett Modell. Uh, so um, Bill Bankston asked the question about the clean lab versus the dirty lab and the control. As you probably know, in his results, uh, he had a lot of trouble controlling the control. And just comparing what you did with what he did, do you have any uh, reason to, ex or any explanations as to why you got different results than he did well, in terms of the control? Okay, let me, I, I think that I probably responded to his question incorrectly. The, he, I, if, if I remember correctly, what he was asking was, do we see differences in the control group? And um, uh, there were some, you know, if you take the control group into the, into the really dirty lab, you do see some, uh, you do see some differences, yeah. Um, you know, and I think the major implications of the study, or one of the implications, is that many people have tried to conduct subtle energy experiments, and if they conduct these experiments in a laboratory environment that's not uh, conditioned, they're going to get very poor results. And this also clearly has implications for practitioners of any medical modality, that if you treat patients in an environment that's dirty, you're not going to get very good results. So really it's your control that would be touched, uh, killed, cells in a dirty lab. Correct. Correct. Okay. Um, 
Joey John Reed here. Yeah.